Hey there, traveler. Wandering the plains in search of how to add Google Analytics to WordPress? Well, rest your bones. You found the answer. These days, setting up a Google Analytics plugin is easier than you might think. Plus, understanding the data it provides can be a game changer for improving your website or business. So let me walk you through the process step by step and break down what all those numbers actually mean. The numbers, the numbers Mason, what do they what mean? Do for this tutorial, we'll be using hosting or WordPress shared hosting, a solid choice for both beginners and pros. Honestly, for the price, it's probably the best WordPress hosting provider for users new to hosting. If you don't have hosting yet or are thinking about switching to something more affordable, I've included discount links in the description to help you get started. Now, before we dive in, you might be wondering, do you need an analytics account beforehand to add Google Analytics to WordPress? The answer, not really. You can create a new account either through the Google Analytics dashboard, the usual way, or directly via the plugin we'll be using. Start by logging into your WordPress administrator dashboard. Then head over to the plugin section, click add new, and search for the WordPress site kit by Google plugin. What I like about site kit is that it stands out from other plugins simply because it's developed by Google itself, meaning you get direct access to your data without hidden paywalls or third party interpretations. This makes it a great choice for smaller websites and blogs that don't need overly complex solutions. Once you find the Google Analytics WordPress plugin, install and activate it. You'll see a banner prompting you to complete the setup. Just click the green button, tick both boxes, and log in with your Google account. On the confirmation screen, select all and continue. Basically, we just need to grant all the permissions Google asked for. So keep clicking the blue buttons until the setup is fully complete. At this stage, SiteKit will automatically connect your website to Google Search Console, giving you valuable data on search queries and other key metrics. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. You don't even need to register separately. To fully install and configure Google Analytics on WordPress, follow the second setup process prompted in SiteKit. Check the required box and select your analytics property. If you don't have one yet, no worries. You can create a new property by simply adding a name and specifying the correct location. Once that's done, just confirm your settings, agree to the terms, and finish the setup. Basically, just keep agreeing to everything Google throws at you. No need to change anything. After completing these steps, head back to your WordPress dashboard. Congratulations, woohoo! You've successfully added Google Analytics to your WordPress site. And what did that take, five minutes? Now, if you already know how to read these numbers, great, happy for you. But if you need a little help understanding your analytics, don't worry, I got you. First things first, it's completely normal not to see data right away. Analytics takes time to sync and start gathering visitor information. Also, your site needs visitors to track anything, so don't forget to share and market your project to get those numbers rolling in. Once your data starts flowing, here's what the main panels in WordPress Google Analytics tell you. The top panel provides an overview of your unique visitors within a specific time frame, along with details on how they found your site. You can adjust the time frame here, but the maximum limit in WordPress is 90 days. For a longer period, you'll need to log in directly to Google Analytics. This panel also breaks down visitor sources. Channels show how users discovered your site, whether through organic searches like Google, direct visits by typing your URL, or traffic from social media. Location displays where your visitors are coming from, categorized by country or region. Devices indicate whether your audience is browsing from desktops, tablets, or mobile devices, helping you understand how your site is being accessed. Below this, you'll find search information, which provides insights into how users are finding your website. This data is valuable for understanding which keywords to target or what to focus on for your blog post. Next, the content panel highlights your most popular pages or posts, showing the number of unique visitors they're getting, along with the bounce rate. This section is crucial for identifying what content resonates most with your audience. If your bounce rate is high, it could indicate that the page isn't engaging enough or it's redirecting somewhere unexpected. You can even check bounce rates by industry with a quick Google search. Similarly, if people visit your page but spend only a few seconds there, your titles might be misleading, leading visitors to leave quickly. One of the most important and useful features of the Google Analytics WordPress plugin is a performance monitor. 
This tool automatically tests your site, not only showing you how users experience it, but also offering suggestions on how to improve performance. I highly recommend spending some time there, especially if you're planning to run an e-commerce project. At the very bottom, you'll also find an easy way to connect your site to Google AdSense and start displaying ads. If you've ever wanted to monetize your blog or make a few extra dollars for your projects, this is probably the easiest way to get started. Every time you log into your WordPress dashboard, the SiteKit WordPress widget will display updated analytics data. Use this to keep track of your site's performance and make informed decisions about your content and strategies. That's a wrap for my quick guide on how to add Google Analytics to WordPress. If you have any questions about how to install Google Analytics on WordPress, feel free to leave a comment. And if you're curious about why I recommend hosting her, check out my review linked in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more step-by-step -step tutorials and reviews. See you next time, bye.